Hi, I'm Jill Rosengard Hill, Executive Vice President at Maggot. I work on the global media and entertainment team, and I'm here to talk with my colleague, Mike Salmon. Hi, I'm Mike Salmon. I'm the Senior Vice President of Games here at Maggot. So I run all of our gaming research. Why are Jill and I talking together? It's games and it's movies. What do they have to do with each other? Kind of everything is the book we look at. And we talk to each other all the time about this. So today we're talking on streaming day, we're talking about churn because it's important to both sides. We're talking about two things that we think are really important across these things, which is community and content and what we can learn from both sides to kind of help each other. Our recent video entertainment study uh, has consumers who are streamers tell us about 50% of them intend to cancel an SVOD within a year of signing up for it. In fact, those who have four or more SVODs uh, churn in and churn out a lot more frequently than others. And in terms of their share of wallet, the willingness to spend on SVODs on average is around $40 with four services. That's not a lot of money to be able to sample and consume the various streams that exist today in streaming services. And in the recent Q1 reports, uh, Netflix reported for the first time a net loss of over 200,000 subscribers while Disney reported an increase in subscribers. So we see this dipping in and dipping out, this flow of signing up and churning that's just truly inevitable. Yeah, I think the other big thing to consider, and this goes on the gaming side as well as the um, global media side is these new consumers, we call them young people, um, Gen Z, even millennials, they are just they're not afraid to unsubscribe. They're not afraid to move. While the older consumers will just hold, like me, I hold, I've got every subscription I've ever had in my life. I still pay for it. I'm just not good at canceling. Um, but the way we look at it is these consumers are really slippery. They're really hard to hold on to. And, and you can be scared by that or you can embrace that. And I think that's what we're talking about here is embracing that slippery nature and the come in and come outness of it and really learning from each other. And gaming is just getting into the streaming space with um, Xbox Game Pass from Microsoft, which has been a huge success for them. And the one big thing that we're finding out in doing research there is that people come for Halo, they come for ports of these big titles that used to cost $70, but they're staying for the other 50 games, much like people came for Stranger Things or Handmaid's Tale, but they stayed for the other things. And that's really about that content curation, which gaming can learn a lot about from the SVOD space. I think search and discovery is definitely an issue that the streamers have been dealing with because the more you can uncover resonant content that one would find um, appealing, uh, the, the stickier you can be. I love the slippery versus sticky, Mike. I think these are definitely areas that uh, both sides can learn from in terms of what are the retention hooks? Um, and if you know that churn is inevitable, and that consumers are slippery, what do you need to do to bring them back in? In fact, our research shows that those who have four or more SVODs, half of them have at least canceled one, and yet half of them has, have also already re-signed up for a subscription service. So you're able to hook them back. What do we do about slipperiness? Yeah, that's also really interesting because the gaming side has some things where they're way behind on and some things way ahead on. So gaming is for free to play and other games for a long time. Uh, we call it games as a relationship here at the Mega Games team. But there's this communication and this community that happens with these properties where they are getting tattoos they're going cosplay. They're invested in this experience. And that is that is sticky just by nature. And that's a thing that, you know, Netflix and, and Hulu and the rest are way behind on like, how come I'm not earning points for watching a bunch of shows? And I'm like, I want to level up. I'm just, the world is full of gamers that play RPGs and life is a game. Like I want points for all the stuff I did. I don't want to just watch it and then feel bad about myself. I want to feel good. Like I'm level 50. I'm the best at Netflix. Woohoo! Like that kind of learning and growth yeah. is to me really key on that side. Well, on the gaming side, it's really understanding what content drives, you know, the algorithms that they have in these things are great, but you have to also understand search and discovery is important too. And it has to feel like more than it is, but just for you. I think streamers are learning that. I think they're learning that there's going to be loyalty drivers. Um, and to your point there, we haven't seen badges and uh, points on the streaming services. That could be one hook. The other is brand extensions, uh, whether it is um, products that are brand extensions, 
services that are brand extensions, experiences like theme park rides and, and concerts and conventions. Um, I think building that brand loyalty to the brand, whether it's at the higher level brand or at the series, we'll, we'll continue to see some growth in that space. And also the other big thing is these two things are so intertwined. We talk about them as they should learn from each other. The truth to the consumer, they are all about share of time and share of wallet, right? How much time do I have in a day? So Netflix famously said that Fortnite was their biggest competitor, just maybe just to like HBO Max mad, but they did say that. And, and it is true because it is about people's time. And as we see in a lot of the studies we've done, uh, gamers are hyper consumers of SBOTs. So you're talking about the same person here. And if they have a new game that comes out, you'll see a drop off in what's happening in Netflix and Hulu. Same thing on the other side. When Stranger Things new season comes out, you'll see a drop off in gaming. These things are disconnected. This is entertainment. And as we like to think about these two separate things, the truth is they're together to consumers. And that's what we do as we talk to consumers. And that's the reason Jill and I work together a lot and our team works together a lot. because so we wanna really talk about the consumer and not our silos that we make up for ourselves. So if you'd like to continue this conversation with us, we'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us.